Okay, fight fans and fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now Patreon, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in the world of combat sports. Let's get started. Okay, as usual, congratulations are due. Congratulations, Zolani Tete. First time I got to watch him fight, and well, I didn't get to see much. He's uh, highly advertised as the most feared man in boxing, the most avoided man in boxing. I always enjoy the lighter weights. You always get some really beautiful boxing. Um, here's the thing, he broke a world record. Grand total, 11 seconds. Tete. Remember the name. Uh, on top of that, I really, really, really like the fact that he's calling out dudes and everything. Uh, he wants to unify belts, so I'm all for it. Brand new fan of Zolani Tete. Also, congratulations, Brian Codwell. Amateur boxer and part of Canada's Olympic team. Uh... Honestly, he, I didn't get to watch the fight. It was at Grant Brothers at their amateur show. But I heard from a lot of people that both fighters put on a hell of a show. He had a bit of a layoff. And uh, through talking to him, I've got to learn some of the hardships that Olympic boxers face. I was warned a couple years ago not to get involved with Olympic boxing if I planned on getting my heart broken. And, well... Here I am talking about a possible Olympic fighter. Bottom line is this. Uh, he's a really likable guy and uh, fights like a Mack truck. So if you get a chance, go look on social media. I believe on his Instagram he's posted some stuff. If not, go check out, uh, I believe, Jesse Thompson and the Bredesian brothers who were obviously at the Grant Brothers show. Uh, heavy hitter. Really interesting young man. Three-time British Columbia heavyweight champ and three-time Golden Glove champ. So, he's no slouch. Make sure to check him out. Brian Caldwell. Also, quick shout-out. Being my first fight fiend on my Patreon account. That's a perfect segue. Folks, I just opened a Patreon account. I'm going to throw up the link on the page. Uh, make sure to check it out on the links on the bottom. If you call yourself a supporter of mine, here's your chance to help out. I've quickly discovered that none of the millionaires or big time promoters that I know are going to be able to help me. And uh, 9 out of 10 times, it's always a guy who's in a similar situation as I am. Uh, just regular people, I guess. And uh, I'm really thankful for the people that help me. And uh, I've got a bunch of of stuff uh, lined up. I got different sections. Uh, you can give different amounts. Just make sure to go check it out at a minimum. Let me know what you think. Maybe you can help me improve it. I would greatly appreciate it. That leads me to what's going on in the Fight City and on the FightCity.com there is a little bit of noise going around. I got a bit of an exclusive for you guys. So you all remember how I was calling for an Eve Ulysses Steve Claggett rematch? And a lot of Steve Claggett's fans online were like, oh, he'll give him the rematch. Hell, I got Steve Claggett on video saying it himself that he's going to give him a rematch as soon as possible. Well, it seems like that's not entirely true. I have it on good authority that an offer was made. For both of them to fight on the undercard of Saunders Lemur in front of an HBO crowd, which would have been an even better setting than the first fight, and probably more money considering A, he won, and B, now you're doing it in a much larger venue. And they said no. Now, another thing uh, that has changed on this whole landscape is uh, I had complained that this loss that they gave Eve Ulysses that he didn't earn but the one that they gave him 
was going to hinder him and that he wasn't going to be able to get on the HBO show and that you know we were going to have to wait a while before you know he gets to to progress you know that this delayed his career however as weird as it is since Steve Cleggett refused this supposed offer the other offer that's on the table is versus Cletus Selden the Hebrew Hammer the name's well deserved. 21 and 0 with 17 KOs. He's a real threat. And they're talking about putting him up against Eve Ulysses on HBO. The kid shines when the pressure's on. And I think the loss might have just acted as bait. So thank you, Steve Cleggett. We're going to HBO. As far as what's going on in the Fight City, well, a lot of fighters are getting ready for fights coming up. Obviously, the Ida Tiger crew getting ready for the undercard of the Saunders Lemire fight. We've got the Group Yvon Michel crew doing a show at the casino, headlined by the Jamaican juggernaut himself. Also, quick notable on that card, Jessica da Cobra Camara. Got Ryan Ford in action. We got Jonathan DeBella, the kickboxing phenom, making his second fight at Madison Square Garden. Make sure you support that kid. Bottom line is this, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, but there is a lineup of guys in the gym right now getting ready for fights. So make sure you stay tuned and follow yours truly. Now, as far as what's going down on this weekend's TV schedule, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, so let me get started. Friday, 7 a.m. If it's 7 a.m., you know it can only be one thing. One championship is back. Fight Network, thank you for putting that on. Some of us will be setting our DVRs. Uh, ben Askren's on that one. Don't really care. 4 p.m. We got a bunch of boxing going down in England. There's too many to talk about, so just check out your streams. Okay, this one's a little messed up if... Uh, you go online, you're going to be able to catch it at 3.45 in the a.m. Now, it says Saturday, but I have a feeling, you know, basically, really late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So, on, you know, after midnight, when Saturday begins, 3.45 in the morning, we've got the Fight Pass UFC prelims. Then at 7 a.m. the main card starts. It's USC Fight Night 122. It's going down in Shanghai. I guess that's why the hours are so messed up. Uh, between you and me, they're going to replay it later. Uh, on that one, the crazy card where Bisbing stepped up to fight Kevin Gaslam. Quick notable, Montreal fighter Alex Garcia is going to Donkey Kong somebody. So make sure you tune in to that. Then, in Uncansville, Connecticut, at the Mohegan Sun, you're more than likely going to have to stream this one, but Daniel Gonzalez versus Danny O'Connor for the WBC International Super Lightweight title. Konstantin Benjaru versus Tabisu Mikchunu. Man, these are some tough names. For the WBC International Cruiserweight title. Quick notable, also going down Saturday night in Saskatchewan, uh, Gary Kopis will be in action. He is the Canadian champ. It's a really good card. Also, uh, going down in Nova Scotia, got a really good card going down with Ryan Rodzicki. Make sure to check him out. Then, at Madison Square Garden, HBO, Boxing After Dark, Main Events, and Golden Boy Promotions. The IBA Super Welterweight Straps on the line. Back from Murtazaliev versus Carlos Galvan. We got Sullivan Barrera versus Felix Valera. We got Jason Sosa versus Yuri Gamboa. Then, last but not least, the main event. The IBA and WBO Strap is on the line. Light Heavyweights, Sergey Kovalev versus Vacheslan Sharbransky. A lot of people are saying that Sharbransky is like a young Kovalev. Kovalev's been in a few championship fights now in a row. Don't know if all those ward fights and the losses have impacted him. He has got a new trainer. There's a new team and he seems eager and motivated. 
and uh, maybe more positive. So, I'm looking forward to this fight. Very interesting considering that most of the light heavyweights are in Montreal. So here's uh, hopes that one of these guys will face Arthur Betterbiev. Well, that's it for me this week. Make sure to check out my Patreon page. Become a fight fiend, folks. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.